One, another term is LOD. LOD can be a lot of refination as well. And, but the, the starting point of LOD is from UAE, USA, is uh, from AIA document E202-208. It's a level of detail. AIA is American Institute of Architect. They produce uh, one document about uh, how you want to input uh, information in BIM. And that document is for US uh, Institute of Architect. It's not for the whole world. So they have their own definition about the LOD. That is the definition. And this is uh, from Australia. I, I'm not going to teach you this one because I'm going towards collaboration. Kan? I expect this is basic thing that uh, you already gone through. Lah. Okay? But what I'm trying to show you that this again is not fixed one. Eh? AIA document 202-208 said about something else about the LOD. You can see from practical beam, if you Google, suddenly the LOD talk about something different at LOD 300. If you go to AIA document 202, the LOD 300 is not this. Okay? So you go to practical beam, you see this is also widely used. LOD, level of development and if you go under BIM forum you see the 300 is different so the LOD itself has a several definition, you don't need to argue about it, when you attend any of the courses or any of uh, any the organization you just need to inquire you are referring LOD based on what document that's about it okay? and you refer to that document you don't need to argue, no LOD 300 from my perspective, from my training, from Harriet Watt saying that different. No, no need to argue. Because there are a lot of definition, there are a lot of documents all over the world okay, uh, define LOD in their own terms. So when you join your the organization, you just need to ask. In our organization, implementing BIM, LOD based on what document? That's about it. Because there are a lot, you can Google now, you can see a lot of definition of LOD, all different. Most of it is different, lah. most of it different at LOD 300. Okay? And some of the different is at LOD 400. So, doesn't matter. There's a understanding about LOD, level of development and level of details. Both are different, again, uh, LOD Level of development is not the same as level of detail. Development is about accuracy. Detail is about the information in the models. Okay. Okay. Eh? So another LOD is level of definition. In UK, there's one LOD. They, they call level of definition. That's another thing. But it's never be used in Malaysia. It all um, do not understand what is it, what the purpose of it, but. It's actually the definition is for the documentation purpose. So it doesn't matter. We we not using level of definition in Malaysia. It's either level of development or level of detail. So in Asia, we have the understanding that we're not going to use level of details, but we're only going to stick on the level of development. Because our construction industry is developing from one phase to another, from the inception, concept, design, procurement, construction, you know, we, we are developing based on the construction phases. We don't develop the drawing based on how many details of information we input in the construction drawing. So the Asia side of the world say that we are only going to use level of development but not level of details. Means that we are not going to, not supposed to use the AIA document 202-208 lah. Okay, and then LOD is very subjective again, so there, there should be no argument about whose LOD is right or whose LOD is wrong. Just when you you join or embark into the project, you need to have the project LOD. Project LOD, so that everybody can refer to the one same LOD. Okay, another part, another definition, because all this will be used in collaboration eh? is the beam maturity level level and beam capability stage capability stage that about it beam maturity level is to measure the maturity of beam implementer in using the document 
to implement the information development. How mature you are in, in, in information management. It's not about the models. It's not referring to the model. It's referring to what document you use when you implement BIM. When you manage the information, to be exact. You use what document is it? Is it from, you, you are using Avanti, you are using BS1192, you are using CPIC. What document you use to manage the information? It's not about model. It's about managing the information. How mature you are? Are you reading a ABC book? Are you reading a story book, novels? What book you use? How mature you are? You are at the standard six, but you are reading novels. Love novels. Very mature, yes? But you are just for four. Yeah. Something like that. Lah. Okay, how mature you are. So, and the, the capability, how capable you are in using the model, in developing the model. So, two different measurements. One is the maturity level and another one is capability stage. And since it is a name, it's a noun, maturity level and capability stage, you cannot swap maturity stage, capability level. You cannot. People will know that you don't know. If you say uh, it's a BIM maturity stage, no, it's a name. So you must use BIM maturity level developed by Mark View in UK in 2008. 2007, 2008, we stayed there, yeah? 2008, yeah? by Mark View. So when they, when he developed this uh, model, he named it as maturity level. So you must use it as level. And again, I repeat, it's about measuring your maturity in managing information in your project. Got it, eh? So another one is BIM Capability Stage developed by Bila Sukar in Australia for Australia Industry in 2009. So he developed this uh, Capability Stage, he named it as Stage, so you must use it as Stage, don't use it as Capability Level. So you, the name is Capability Stage to measure your capability in developing the model. Stage 1 means that you can develop one model, one model, architecture model, civil model, MVP model, just one model. Stage two, when you can develop two model and merge it into one. Yeah, I show you afterwards. Huh? So if you're capable to do that, means that you are at stage two. And then stage three is when you can integrate all the models with another IT software. For example, when you already have all this model integrate together and you link that model with the ERP. You know ERP? For account purpose? For accountant. Lah. So you can link your model with the account in the office. When you update the model on site, your office know that the window already been delivered and installed on site. So your office can send invoice based on the project on site live, updated to your office. That is integration. You can do that, you are at stage three of the BIM implementation. Mostly, we are at stage two. So if you talk about collaboration, collaboration of models, you are talking about stage two. You are not talking about level two. Okay? Understand, eh? Understand the difference, eh? When you talk about level 2, when you do the collaboration at stage 2 using the document that stated here. You use that document and you collaborate the models, then you can say that you are at level 2. If you only collaborate the models, you are at stage 2. Okay, got it eh? That's a different, you know? You cannot say you are now at level 2 but you only doing the the... the integration of models without any documents, without any process. Uh, that is not uh, level. Okay, that's a difference uh, between two, these two. There are no other uh, models measuring our capability or maturity or implementation. These are the only two that publish uh, worldwide. But there may be 
uh, based on project measurement. So that is different, okay? So another uh, terms is the beam users. You use beam for what purpose? There are 25 users here, but you cannot implement all at one project. So when you start the project, you need to select you want to implement beam for what purpose. So this is another term, beam users. Uh, most uh, sometimes we uh, we met some people when uh, they ask you uh, who is uh, what is your beam users in the organization, and then the person answer uh, our beam user is architect engineer. <laughs> you see, means what? You don't know lah. <laughs> you don't know lah. There's a term of beam users. Nobody going to ask you who's your beam user. Mostly, they, they ask you why you want to use BIM in your, your organization. So, what is your BIM users? Design. So, we can say we, we use BIM for coordination, we use BIM for uh, estimates, okay? for quantity extraction, whatever. But it's not BIM user. Eh? So, now the next one uh, the advantage of BIM, BIM advantages. Uh, <coughs> This is a uh, proven eh, based on our experience. Uh, we can lower the cost up to 33% reduction in initial cost of construction and the whole life cost of being asset. And uh, faster delivery, 50% reduction in overall time. Eh? So it means <coughs> when you apply BIM, you need to get this kind of result. In terms of QS, it's proven using one of the software. Okay? <coughs> Without BIM, this building, this uh, kind of building, similar, similar building, it takes about uh, six to eight weeks for response to local authority with beam technology only seven days uh, for the measurement, uh, quantity measurement and costing. Without beam, they take, they use about four QS and six weeks uh, to take to to uh, quantity take off, uh. and then with uh, this. Software, they only take two weeks with 3QS. You see, you need to get this kind of result when you implement this improvement of uh, productivity and efficiency. Okay, this is another one. Result of rework, you can reduce the redundancy up to 95%, increase the productivity up to 28%. Is it? And then, uh, this is another proof uh, RFI request for information. Without BIM 677, with BIM 2, change order 311 to 0, less than 1% and so on. Eh? Just to prove that when you apply BIM, you need to get the results. <coughs> if you apply BIM, you only got the models, then uh, it's not BIM. Eh? Okay. So why BIM? Why we need BIM? You see, because currently, typical problem in construction, 30% of the project do not meet original program or budget. 92% of clients say that the designer drawing are typically not sufficient, and so on. And every at every construction phase, there are a lot of issues, a lot of problems for the last 30 years. And the information in the construction industry are fragmented. We got the information all over the stakeholders. Every stakeholder have their own information and they keep the information to themselves. And cause all the problem here, you see, a compromised decision. Because the lack of information will compromise your decision. We all know that with one information, we decide something else. With two information, we decide another thing. With three information, we decide some other thing. More information, we with more information, we can decide more accurate. We can decide better with more information. So, this uh, this this statement uh, given by Malaysian very huge company. Eh? He said because of the lack of information, lead to ten to twenty percent time and cost override. Just because of he don't get the information on time during the decision making. So we need the information immediate. Yeah, because of the lack of information as well, you need to have a, you, you, you're going to face the reworks, you're going to have a design change and all those things. 
all in the information currently in our construction industry, all at silos, you know. So every people like uh, architect have their own information, they keep to themselves, the engineer have their information, they keep to themselves. So that's uh, how our current industry is going. But what we need is to have all information across the board that everybody can have the information at the same time, at any time. So BIM is about having that information. So other thing is that BIM can uh, reduce conflict, improve collective understanding of the design intent, uh, improve overall project quality, reduce changes and so on. Basically, why we need BIM is to reduce waste in terms of time, money, effort and material yeah? and to improve the efficiency, coordination and design. Means when you apply BIM, you need to get this. Yeah? You need to get this. If you apply BIM, with, you don't get this, there must be something wrong somewhere. So based on the case study, you see, uh, in Malaysia, mostly Malaysian implement BIM is to get all those things, all those five things, visualization, 3D coordination, flash, uh, to get the quantity takeoff, cost, uh, cost control, construction progress monitoring, and FM. This is what we are uh, serving the industry. Lah. We are serving industry to get the coordination to make sure that uh, the coordination being carried out before the uh, site implementation to get the quantity. We, uh, I'll show you later how you can get very uh, fast quantity takeoff and the uh, monitoring of the construction progress. All those things because we need to address the issue that I stated earlier, the issue of conflict, complexity of design, inadequate design information. Okay, eh? am I going too fast? So far, okay, eh? okay. <coughs> So, beam in construction process. So, because uh, we are saying that beam is a process, can the question that people need ask is what process? Is it a construction process? BIM is a process. What process? It's not the construction process. It's not the construction process. Okay? Uh, there's another saying that is an information process, information development process, and another book by Chuck Eastman is saying that BIM is a business process. Uh, so, which one? Okay, let's, let's have a look at this. Yeah? So why I say it's uh, not a construction process? First we deduct, it's not a construction process because a construction process already tied under project management body of knowledge. Right? When you want to apply project, when you embark into project, you can't run with all these nine knowledge areas. Right? You have to deliver this. In fact, you are tied with the construction contract. In the construction contract, they are already process. They already stated the process how to deliver the project. So when you apply BIM, you are not changing the construction process. You cannot change the construction process. So BIM is not about the construction process. Okay? BIM is a process. What is it? Okay, another thing, when you embark into a project, you need to deliver.